Today, I'm going to be building a multiplayer chess web app in React and Node.js. For some context, Facebook built React to help build hyper-responsive user interfaces that are used by billions of people. Netflix and PayPal uses Node.js to scale their backend architecture, enabling billions of requests at a much lower response time. I will be building an end-to-end -end product using these technologies, all the way from buying a domain, setting up the web servers, designing the UI, building the front-end, back-end, and marketing. If you want to download the final code for this project, I put a link in the description just for that. By the end of this video, we will have a production-ready site to play chess with your friends. I first start by designing the project architecture. What I'm envisioning is when a user first visits our app, um, they don't have to sign in or anything. What they can do is click to create a game and then they will get a game URL and then the user can send that URL to his friend via Facebook Messenger or something. And then when his friend clicks on the URL, that's when the game starts for both players and they can choose to have a video chat through our app and play chess at the same time. So we need a Node.js web server paired with Express and this REST API could be hosted on Heroku as our backend. And we also need a place to host our static frontend files. We can leverage Firebase hosting for this purpose. The reason why I'm keeping the front end and back end separate is mainly for performance purposes and to keep the code simple. Now let's get into the business logic of this web app. For chess, we need to have the model and the UI. This is what is going to happen. I'm going to be doing all the move logic and chess logic on the front end, so inside the browser. This is to minimize the number of requests from the client to the server. In addition, I want to open a constant TCP connection between the two players and the server using WebSockets. We can leverage the open source socket.io library for that. Finally, I want to have a video chat beside the chessboard. This, I feel, gives the entire app a more personal feel to it. For this, we can leverage WebRTC and the Simple Peer library, which is an API for WebRTC. And with that, we are done. Here is the final project architecture. Let's get started coding the front end. For this, we will use create react app. Next, we shall make the directories for the UI and the model. And uh, inside the chess folder, this is where our model and UI will live. And I'm also gonna create an asset folder, which is where my image and audio files will live. Next, I need the connections folder. And here, this is where our socket.io logic should live. And yeah, this should be our core directories for this project. Now we need to specify all the dependencies required for the client. As we have laid out in the project architecture, we need to have the socket.io library. And then I'm gonna need something to actually render the board and make it possible for the player to move the pieces. For this, we can use the react.conva.js library. In order to handle all of the chess logic, we can abstract all of this with the open source chess.js library. And to enable video chat with WebRTC, we need to have the simple peer library. And finally, we need the UUID library to generate a unique identity per game session. And that should be all the dependencies we need for the client. Now, time to code the model. All right, first, let's install the dependencies we just added earlier. For each chess piece, we need its name, its color, its identity, and then whether or not it's being attacked. And we can represent that as a boolean. And also we need to have a set square and get square method. For these methods, what it should do is set this piece, or I guess assign this piece to a specific square. All right, next, we need to define a square class. So here we need its x coordinate and we also need its Y coordinate, and we also need its canvas coordinates. And last but not least, we need to have the piece that's currently on this square. Cool. Now we need to architect the chess game class itself. So in this class, the first thing that we really need to define is uh, the color of this current player. And this is really important. Yeah, so when we initialize the game class, what we need to tell 
this instance is what the current color this player is supposed to be. And this very important piece of information will define almost all of the other functions that we're also going to uh, code up. Now, next, let's create a method to generate the initial starting board. And then as soon as we initialize this class, we'll just make this a starting board. And in this method, what we want to do is basically um, make the board orientation for the current player that we're on. And in the model, we also need to define a method for when the player decides to move a piece. Call that move piece. Here is where we'll define the logic for when a player decides to move a piece. Now let's move on to the user interface. So as I mentioned before, we're going to leverage the Conva.js library in order to render the actual pieces onto the board so the players can drag them. Actually, I think in the Conva.js documentation, we can immediately pass in a draggable um, property inside the image component, which is really convenient. So um, once we have this information, all we got to do is just return that in here. And uh, I think that should be good. Oh yeah, there's also one important piece of property that I forgot to include, and that is the actual image URL of this piece. So we'll, we need to pass that into the image component. And now let's move on to coding the main chess game component. So let's import React. And uh, since this is gonna be a pretty big component, I'm gonna make it class-based instead of having a hook. So essentially all this class is responsible for is taking whatever we, whatever we have in the model and then rendering it to the screen. In that case, we need to have images to render onto the screen which is why we need to search online for a picture of a chessboard and some chess pieces. And another responsibility for this component is we need to do some calculations of uh, pixel coordinates. And so when a user moves a piece, we can do the calculations and figure out which piece was moved, where it was moved to, and things like that. So it's just gonna be a bunch of CSS. But for now, let's just go online and search for some chess images. Okay, so here's a chessboard that I found online. And uh, here are some of the chess pieces that I found online. And uh, this is what I was talking about when I mentioned URL. So this URL, I would pass onto chess piece here, and then this would essentially render that image. And uh, yeah, so that does it for images. All right, cool. So for the actual game state itself, we need to instantiate the model that we have defined. So we can do it here. And remember how in our model we needed to pass in a boolean to represent whether or not this player's color is white. And so here is where we define that. And uh, what we can do is actually pass this in as props. And we also need to have two booleans to represent if either the white king or the black king is in check. And uh, we will instantiate that as false initially. Okay, there we go. And I was just thinking for our render function here, what we can probably do is have an overlaying div and uh, in Conva we have this thing called a stage and then this thing called a layer and these are sort of the things that the user interacts with the stage and the layer and we want to make them draggable so in order to do that we need to have the stage and the layer sit sort of one layer on top of the div and uh, the div what we can do is make the background image background of this be equal to the chest board and then for the stage and then the layers, what we can do is actually render the individual chess pieces. So uh, we could probably have a, um, a for loop in here that goes through every single element in our model and then renders it and uh, renders it here. So actually what the move function does is it actually uses the Pythagorean theorem in order to calculate the distance between the final position of the dragged chess piece and every single square on the board and it chooses the closest square, um, the shortest distance, and it assigns that chess piece to that square. Alright, and now with that method being defined and uh, the stuff in the model being defined, we have a general template for what we're gonna build. So now all that's left is to code everything.
Holy crap, that took longer than I expected. I guess I'll have to do some fancy editing. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess I'm done most of the front end stuff now. Uh, well, the bulk of the, um, the chest stuff. And uh, now all that's left to do is to figure out the socket I.O. logic and code up the video chat component. And that should be it for the client. The video chat logic and the socket logic has a lot of overlap. Let's first figure out sockets. So here we initialize the socket client and export it so that the other components can use it to submit events and register listeners. And we also submit uh, my current socket ID such that other clients can communicate with me and uh, easily transfer information. For the video chat part, since we'll be using WebRTC, we can use an API that interfaces, that interfaces with WebRTC called SimplePeer. So we'll import it here. So how this is going to work is the user can call the other user by pressing a call button and we will emit a socket request through our Heroku server notifying the SimplePeer API on the client of an incoming call. And using the SimplePeer API, we'll be able to share the video stream object between the two users. Now in order to figure out which users to share the stream data with, we need to pass the socket IDs of both players in our initial socket request. Uh, before we code more of this uh, socket logic, let's uh, first figure out the backend implementation because otherwise things will get really really complicated. Okay, now we should create our backend and now we run npm init. So the only dependencies we'll be needing on the backend is just the express and socket IO library. And I've already delegated a lot of the heavy computation stuff on the front end, so the back end should be pretty light and easy. Uh, so everything here is pretty much all you need to handle requests in socket IO. So as soon as a user is connected via socket, we will initialize a game here. Okay, so inside uh, game logic, we need to export an initialize game function. So we can do that right here. There we go. And we're also passing in the IO and the client socket here. So we could probably initialize some global variables here. And we'll say that's the game socket. Great. And now what we, all we got to do is bind event listeners to game socket. So when the client or uh, when the client sends requests, the server can register event listeners to listen for those requests. Yeah. So the way that socket works is that we have a namespace and then we also have individual rooms. Um, I think for us, what we're going to leverage is socket IO rooms. So by default, there are a lot of methods in socket IO that we can leverage. So whenever a user creates a game, what we can do on the back end is create a room. So yeah, I think the only thing that's left now is implementation. So yeah, now I'm just gonna switch back and forth between the um, back end and the front end um, and just finish everything. <laughs> Boom, we're finally done. All right, let's go for a quick little demo. So first, let's boot up our backend server. And we can see that it's running on port 8000. And so what we can do is update the backend URL on the front end here. And then we can boot up our front end server. Fingers crossed. Boom, okay. Now for username, I can put my name and then submit. And basically what you would do is send this URL to your friend via Facebook Messenger or something. I'm just gonna open it up in another tab. And then here you would uh, put in your username, like Jack Ma or something like that. And bam, there you go. And you can, uh, let's just put some chess first. So you move and uh, you can see it updates instantly. There we go. So you can start playing some chess with your friend. And uh, what you can also do is call your friend. So you can say right now I'm Jack He, and I'm calling Jack Ma. And then me as Jack Ma, I can 
choose to accept or not. Um, actually, I'm gonna turn off my sound because uh... Finally, let us buy the domain now. I usually use Namecheap, but you can use whatever you want, like domain.com or something. Now all we have to do is configure the DNS to point at our Firebase server. And we are done. This is the finished product. Again, the code for this project can be found in the description. And now let us play chess with some friends. Wait, sorry, just one more thing. Uh, I have a channel also. I'm Jack's editor. Uh, I'm Cabbage Corgi on YouTube and Twitch and Andrew.Cabbage on Instagram. So if you could follow me, uh, sub to me, that'd be awesome. Anyways, yeah. Back to the chest. Work. Please work. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it works. Y your name's please work. Hey. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Hey. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go, Jack. <laughs> hey, what's good, Jack? I'm not Jack. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? Say what's hello up? to YouTube. Hey, what's up? Good. What's good, YouTube? <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be a checkmate, I bet. Good game, good game. You're winning, huh? Wait, oh wait, was it checkmate? Oh, I didn't equal. Who, who yeah. did you get? Yeah, like, uh, I'm gonna play a game with Liang in like two minutes, so... Uh... <laughs> Liang? Yeah, yo, yeah. Yo, I, I wanna see this shit. 